Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I wanna talk about how to set up the Donastari pad. It's a pretty simple process. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through just a very basic setup. All right, to kick off, uh, you're gonna need the editor software. So if you go to the Donna website um, and scroll all the way down to the bottom um, and go to product manuals and go to MIDI keyboard. I don't know why they put it in here, but they do. Um, then you'll find that you can download the Starry Key 25 editor software for Mac or Windows, okay? I have downloaded it for Mac because I'm running it on Mac. Um, so all you need to do is just download that piece of software. So what it'll do is it'll save it to your downloads, but what you want to do is you want to transfer it over to the applications folder, okay? Um, the reason for that is because of the way Mac's set up, um, you will, it needs to be in the application folder to be a trusted file. Uh, if you're having trouble opening or if it's saying that it can't open the, the um, application, just hit command spacebar, type in terminal, open up terminal. Now, so type in XATTR space dash CR space and then drag and drop the software uh, image into terminal and then it will pre-populate the path click enter and you're done and now you should be able to open the software all right so my Donna starry pad is already connected to uh, the computer um, and to basically uh, the next step is that we need to make sure that this software uh, can see the Donna starry pad if for whatever reason send to device or uh, get from device is grayed out. It's because you haven't saved it to your applications folder. So do that first and you should be fine. All right, so um, in order to set this up, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we connect to the starry pad, the physical starry pad. So we'll go into options up here and then device setup. And then you'll have all of your MIDI devices will be show, will show in here. And what you wanna do is just choose the starry pad for both MIDI in and MIDI out. Click OK. And now it should be connected. And um, another reason why send to device and get from device might be grayed out is because you haven't done this. You haven't set up the device. You haven't connected it to um, uh, to the editor software. All right. Uh, now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about MIDI mapping. But essentially, um, the way your Donastari pad is set up is that all the pads are set to channel 10 as default, and that's very normal for, for drum pads. And all of the uh, control, so the controls for like, you know, faders and knobs and all the buttons are all gonna be sending to channel one, okay? That's also quite normal. Um, so remember, because this is a MIDI device, it can send data to any software that'll receive data. So you can basically use it to do all kinds of stuff like control video editor software, um, you know, podcast software, whatever it is that you wanna do. Um, you should be able to control it with this MIDI device. So in some instances, you're going to have to um, change the channel, you're going to have to change the mode, you're going to have to change the notes, etc., in order for it to do what you need it to do in the software that you're using. Um, but I'm not going to go into detail about that. If you want some more detail, I'm happy to provide it in a further video. But for this um, video, I just want to basically show you how to connect to, this, to the software um, and then uh, basically what you can do within your digital audio workstation with it. All right, let's just say for whatever reason we want all the pads to be sent to channel one because that's what we prefer. Um, Donastari pad editor software has um, a really handy uh, auto populate feature. So if you go here, uh, click on um, tools auto populate, you'll get this box. And in this box, you'll be able to basically auto-populate all of the different features in the um, on the device. So you can auto-populate the pads, the no the knobs, and the faders across the three banks. Okay. Um, I'm gonna basically do one simple change. I'm gonna make all of the um, the pads go to channel one. Okay. So just set note channel one and make sure that they're all the same you can have them be ascending or descending okay um, there are 16 channels 
you can choose from okay like i said i'm not going to go into the detail of um, how midi works it's it can be quite complicated um, but for simplicity's sake i'm just going to set everything to channel one and just send to all banks okay now that i've done that i'm going to send to device and if anything's connected fine it'll say send okay uh, send data to device done all right so we're good to go so all of the pads now um, will be uh, going to channel one and so will the knobs and the faders and all of the buttons. So we can close that out. All right, so here I've got a session open in Logic. If you're using a different program, um, I think generally the, the generally most DAWs uh, operate the same way. They have what's called a learn mode um, and they also have mapping. Um, I'm just gonna show you the learn function because that's probably the easiest way and the most um, likely way that people will use um, this software. All right, now that we've sent it to channel one, if you're not getting any sound, uh, there are two things that you wanna check out. So I've got, this is says drums, but it's actually a piano. I think it's been loaded here. Yeah, it's a piano that's been loaded. All right, so, um, you know, you're gonna have This is working, and the reason it's working is because contact has, you can tell contact what channel to receive MIDI from, okay? So this particular instrument is receiving MIDI from all channels, Omni, okay? If I change it to 10 now, oh, you'll get nothing, okay? Um, if I put it to one, it'll receive from one because all of our pads are set to one. All right, but I'm gonna leave it on Omni, all right? So uh, the other thing you can do in your plugin, so if you right click in your um, virtual instrument, you should have this learn MIDI CC automation function come up, okay? If I click that, what it'll do is it'll wait for MIDI data to be sent. And if I move one of these mob, uh, knobs or faders, it will uh, automatically assign um, continuous control between the control and the uh, knob. So I'm gonna click on that, um, and then I'm gonna use this fader. All right, so now I have a continu continuous control MIDI going to um, the size of the room, I'm assuming. And just say I want to do the knob, same deal. So learn MIDI CC automation and then turn the knob and then it'll, now it'll work, okay? So um, so it's pretty easy, it's um, le using the learn uh, mode. So right now I've got piano playing through the pads and the piano size, the size of the room is controlled with fader one and the distance is controlled with the knob, all right? But let's just say I wanna um, use a plugin that doesn't have the right click feature. So in contact, I can right click on a knob and it'll, it'll learn the function, but in, um, uh, what's this, universal audio, you, you can't do that, all right? So you, you right click on it and it won't work, okay? But what you can do is you can actually use the learn mode in the DAW. So for in logic, um, if I click on this knob and I move it around and I command L, um, it'll wait for data. So I'm gonna use this knob here, all right? Oh, you can't see that. So I'm gonna use this knob here and now technically it should operate that knob. So all I did was click on the knob, move the knob, press command L and then that window popped up and it was waiting for MIDI data and I just moved the knob. And now this knob is used, is um, controlling the head select for Galaxy Tape Echo. All right, so um, that's pretty much it. There's not much more to it. If you have problems with it, then um, try disconnecting and reconnecting your device. It could potentially be that it hasn't picked it up. Um, I, I think it's very rare that it wouldn't. The Donna Stereo Pad is plug and play. I have had no problems with it. I just basically plug it into the computer and it works just fine. 
Um, the other thing you can do is if you are wondering whether it's sending MIDI data and you're not quite sure, if you look up here, and this is in Logic, I'm pretty sure most DAWs do this, but up here you'll see um, MIDI in and MIDI out. Okay, so this is up at the top there. If you can't see that, then open up custom or, you know, uh, customize your toolbar so you can actually see it. I think in some instances it doesn't doesn't show it because uh, you've got, say, for example, here, like I think most track like default tracks come up like that but if you click custom you will be able to see a lot more okay um midi in midi out uh is really useful because what you can do is you can determine if it's actually sending midi at all so in this instance when i touch this pad see how it's and even when i press on it it's telling me the value okay so it's playing b uh, zero as you can see, like it'll tell me how hard I've hit it. Um, hopefully that's useful. Um, if you do wanna know a little bit more about MIDI mapping and how you might wanna map, um, say a full session with the Starry Pad, um, say for example, for a podcast or something like that, please leave a comment and I'll uh, aim to get around to it. And leave a comment if you've got any sort of other ways um, that you can do this or if you found something useful in terms of troubleshooting with the Donna Starry Pad, I'd really like to know. Thanks for watching.